The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Live, live from the spot, rough and raw, at our daddy's house. We're at our daddy's house. Let me check the date. I just opened up the calendar. It's Pasta Party 2011. <laughs> Welcome to our daddy's house. We're live from our daddy's couch. Let his... me check this. Let me check the spaghettiometer because it looks like we're going full blown pasta. Spaghetti it on. It's <laughs> spaghetti again. 2011. As you well know, as you've probably guessed, we had uh, we carbo loaded pre show. At, here in Ironton, uh, our our stepmom Carol fed us a bunch of spaghetti. We we're fucking primed for <laughs> college. <laughs> fed us spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. Against our will. She's looked down at her and said, "You're not fucking funny enough. Eat some more spaghetti." <laughs> she shoved spaghetti fistful after fistful of sweet spaghetti into my mouth. <laughs> I am ready to blow. Noodle up, you unfunny fucks. <laughs> it's time to get spaghetti. <laughs> you done? You you got spaghetti. Okay. Um, Spagat, you fucker! You got forgotten. I, for real though, rough and raw, I know people have become accustomed to a certain level of editing juice applied <laughs> to this show. This is not going to be one of those apps. It's going to be rough, raw, just cut it, set it, forget it. I, I, uh, I, we, we are gathered around one mic. The last time we did this, two of us were jet lagged. And I was drunk. And Travis was drunk. So, not, it's not going to be like this. This is my brother, my brother, me. It's an advice show for the modern era. I am your... Most excellent eldest brother, Justin McElroy. And I am the middlest brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm Griffin, and I'm a child. This is an advice show. We take your questions and turn them into advice. Uh, I am drinking a red stripe, so this show's coming to you straight from the islands. Well, I've, got, the rhythm. I've got a red stripe going and an amber brown. I no, just, honey brown, excuse I just me. Sorry. Spilled on my sh- Travis, Travis got a beer before we started and then said, I'm going to need a beer. He had a beer. He has a backup beer waiting. So just so you guys know, if I need an extra burst of energy, you'll hear quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll know because we'll draw attention to it. Uh, our first question. At some point, also, our daddy's going to come in the room and take pictures of us, no joke, and it's going to be super distracting. It's going to throw us off whatever dope rhythm we're on, so get ready for that moment. I hope he's not at the... If he, is, if he comes through that door with a single tear, because he just heard you said that, I'm never forgiving you. I am getting married this summer, and one of my groomsmen is getting married a few months after me. He is having a very small destination wedding and has decided to specifically not give his friends plus ones, even if they are married. My soon-to-be wife is understandably upset about this. Some people think she talked... Oh, some people she talked to think that I should decline to go to the wedding because she wasn't invited. Ideally, I would like my fiancé to be invited, but I also understand my friend's choice to not invite any plus ones, given how small the wedding will be. How can I support my good friend and uh, my fiancé at the same time as from Tristan, not the Marine? Tristan, Tristan, civilian Tristan. Civilian Tristan, civvy Trist. Ah, uh, uh, wow, that is. Uh, what? Susan, Susan, you didn't want to go to Cabo anyway, right? You were yeah. just talking the other week about how much you hate destination you wedding. Don't take this personally, but Derek specifically does not want you there. <laughs> it's a destination. The destination is Des Moines. Uh, <laughs> it's not going to be a big deal. I, man, that's brutal. What a great way to start off your wedded life, just pissing off everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I honestly think that straight up, you can't. Go. I, I wouldn't go. I mean, honestly, like if if they, it it's just the thing is about a wedding is, as much as it is, for you guys, it's just as much, if not more, so for the people that are sort of gathered there. I know it's their special day and what all, but. I think that it's it's it is a slight. I mean, it's like a it's a uh, it's especially a slight because it's your friend like who's in your wedding, saying like whether he has thought about it or not, saying, "Hey, I know you just got married and are happily wedded for all of three months, but you're going to need to leave her behind." Like that's 
That's a dick move. Yeah, especially he's getting married a few months after the question asker. Yeah. So she's going to be your wife when yeah. that happens. You can't leave your wife behind, especially, especially not if you're going someplace nice. Like, oh, really? God, no. That is not the way to kick off your... Just destination weddings are the most whorish thing you can do, right? Yeah, it's terrible already. Like, the that's... only way it flies with me is if you invite no one. If it's just like, we were creepy sneaky, and we bolted out of there... Please come and give us presents in a big room. What oh. about webcast wedding? Web cast. Oh, who's it. invited? Everyone, because everyone's got an internet connection nowadays. You got UStream on that phone. You're invited. Justin TV my wedding, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm happy to TV anyone's wedding. By the way, it's for a very reasonable fee. Thank you. Um, uh, honestly, Tristan, you are going to learn very soon that um, choosing the side of your wife is almost never not the right thing to do. <laughs> I'm yeah. not sure how my how, negatives how are. How fucked up is your friend that he's like, I want you to come, but not your other half. Not your better half. And I say that kudos to you for realizing how big an God, issue God, you are ahead of the fucking step. game, bro. Good it's, job. I'm proud of see you. See you, honey. A worse man would have been like, hey, did I remember to pack my trunks and my goggles, but not my mm. wife? Okay, cool. I'm out. <laughs> Got the banana boat. Uh... Don't have Barbara. Don't got my SO. But sorry, sorry, Tristan. I I know that's awkward. Yep. But honestly, you that's the kind of awkward you can feel good about, especially if you're gonna be married. You gotta get used to. You guys are a team now. It's it's a package deal, and especially if you're gonna be like legally married. It's not like she's your girlfriend. It's a it's a package it's deal. Now. It might be worth it to talk to your uh, groomsman and be like, "Hey, I'm bringing her." And if he's like, "Well, it's a small wedding," then say, "Okay, then I can't come." Yeah, put, I that, can't put that shit back on him. Put Ooh, that ball yeah. right back in his. Court. Yeah, this is his decision to make. It's you two or nothing. On Mother's Day, I took my mom to an ice cafe in NYC for lunch. After we finished eating, she needed to use the restroom. However, there was a woman ahead of her on the line, and both of them had to wait for a long time for the occupant to finish, even though the men's room remained unoccupied. I told her she should just have used the men's room. It was as clean as the women's. The only difference between the two bathrooms was the sign on the door. They were both single toilet rooms, so there was no danger of running into someone of the opposite sex in the bathroom. It's also fairly common for women to use the men's room at an overcrowded bar. Is it? What is someone supposed to do in a situation like this? Is the inverse true for men using the women's restroom? It's from Jordan. God, no. No. No to everything. No to all of that? No Um, to everything. I've... Here's what's up. Okay. When you are a gentleman or a lady living and surviving and just just barely getting by on the skin of your teeth and your charm alone with irritable bowel syndrome, like, <laughs> when you see a wrong gender person in your right bathroom, you get so fucking angry. You mm-hmm. get so angry because it's like, for me, it's always an emergency. So it's like, I, I, I have to go right now, but I can't go. There has to, there better be a good, there better be a goddamn great explanation for this. I'm going to counterpoint by saying, I love using the ladies' room. It always, it's painted better, it's cleaner. It's weird how they have lounges sometimes. Yeah, that guys don't have. You guys better being, hand soap. Are you guys being serious? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Is there, is, is there a legal law that says you can't do that? A legal law? No. <laughs> is there, did <laughs> someone, is there a street law? law? Did someone take a bill to Congress and pass it with the president that said you can't do that? No. It's just signs. If you're in there with the intention of being a sneaky, creepy peeper, I think that, that yeah, is that's illegal. not cool. That's I call I call when I when I get rid of waste in the bathroom. I call it peeping. <laughs> so you'll have to be much more specific. Uh, I'm always creepy about it. I, what is the problem? They're just holes. What your butt? Your butt hole and <laughs> No, I mean you're just you're just oh like a lady's vagina. No, no, like the holes that you leave the bad things in. Like it, it, it they're just holes. Like what's the matter? The toilet, well, the toilet holes. Why are you so adherent to society's rules? Is what I'm saying. Because my... have you seen a little show called Ally McBeal? Yeah, unisex bathrooms, my friend. Sure, sure, sure. Way yeah, baby. Feature. Uga chaka. I dig it. But listen, <laughs> that's getting old. Man. Listen, listen, Billy listen. Zane. My worst fear, a hundred percent of the time, <laughs> even when I'm not when I'm not peeping, my worst fear is that someone's gonna walk in on me on the bathroom. If I'm in the men's room and somebody walks in and sees my bits and everything, <laughs> and like a full grown poop coming out of me, like if a dude sees that, I am haunted. I am. I am aghast. If a lady sees it, I will commit seppuku on the SPOT. 
<laughs> I'll tell you right now, the biggest fear is when I'm using the bathroom in the ladies' room, and the handle jiggles. Oh, like, yeah. they were trying, and then you're trapped in this situation like, where you're like, uh, oh, no. Yeah. They're like, are you done? And you're like, I am now. <laughs> I've got, I have to uh, wait to hold on my shoulders now. And then oh, you got to so do a works. Mrs. Doubtfire style, like, put the keg on your face and sneak out before they realize you're a dude. Um, can I, I wanted to uh, point something out real quick about bathrooms that made me laugh today. Or yeah, it was actually yesterday it occurred to me. I was at the movie theaters in the bathroom. And uh, for me, it does not get better than when two guys are in a bathroom and one guy just toots like it's nothing. <laughs> like all of society's rules have like crumbled around him. And there's nothing more hysterical than a guy dropping it. Like, what? What's up? What's Check up? it. Check, check that out. Check what I just did for what you. What are you going to say now? What's up? Who's ruling this roost? Do you guys want a Yahoo? Yeah, yeah give please. it to me. Uh, this uh, spaghetti-fueled Yahoo is brought to you by Nick Jensen. Thank you, Nick Jensen. And Ragu. Thank you, Ragu. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Darcy B, who says, Should I try out for my sweet 16 or 16 and pregnant? What? Really think about it. I really want my 15-minute fame, so I am going to try and get on MTV. I was thinking maybe my parents could throw a big party for me and I could appear on My Sweet 16. Uh -huh. Although, if I sign up for 16 and pregnant, I could also go on Teen Mom afterwards. This would give me more chance in the public eye. Mm. Uh-huh. So she's saying, should my parents throw me a big party or should I get knocked out? Should I get pregnant and then get double fame? Well, no, this is ridiculous. This is so stupid. Yeah, have the Super Sweet 16. Announced during Super Sweet 16. By the way, I want to get knocked up. I'm fucking no, on it. No, Ooh. make the Super Ooh. Sweet 16 about knocking her out. Like, the, the knocking up theme party. So it's a Super Duper Sweet 16. Yeah. 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 I think that in this high-pressure society, you have to try to get on as many TV shows as possible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, uh, could, we, could we do something? Could we do, what's that? You could do Super Sweet 16 and 16 and Pregnant, and also maybe you have a really challenging cake you need baked for your party, what's and the, then you have to get on Cake Boss. What's the one where they make the real-ass little baby girls look like creepy-ass porcelain dolls? That's not on MTV. But does it ha Oh, we're talking single channel. Single channel. Here's what I'm suggesting. X Factor? Ha True Life. I'm a man in a woman's body. Okay. Uh -huh. Then, then you switch it, and you're. Oh no, no! True life. I'm a woman in a man's body. Okay. Then you do made. True life two. I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm, back to, I'm back to a woman again. And then you do made. Mm -hmm. I want to be a woman. Uh -huh. So then you get like so the I gender change. The third time. RuPaul comes in, gives you the whole treatment. At that point, you are an unofficial MTV VJ. Right. <laughs> you're like the the Jesse. You basically sway at that yeah, point. You're yeah. basically sway. And then what you what you want to do is get on Super Sweet Sixteen during the party, get knocked up. Uh huh. You're saying like chain it, so, like an entire like nine year career, a c -c 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 combo. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but I, I I have to be honest. I'm not sure the human frame can withstand <laughs> three sex changes before can you're your, allowed to drive. Can your frame handle the fame? Is my question. <laughs> Your friend can't we just invented friend. a new MTV show, which is where you hurt your body irreversibly <laughs> trying to get on MTV shows. Are you famous enough? Actually, that is the plot to Real Housewives of New Jersey. So I think they got that trademark. We call it American Shame Idol. And everybody has to try out to ruin themselves for MTV. Can your frame handle the fame, Griffin? To be completely honest, I don't think... My frame has had that fame a little bit. Yeah. But they, MTV News didn't make me cut all my whole dick off and put it back on. <laughs> Not like the whole again. dick. <laughs> and, then, bits. and then make you introduce the new Red Hot Chili Peppers video. I actually met Sway when I was at MTV News Studio. And I was like, hey, Sway, how's it going? And he had this look in his eyes like, I, my dick's seen some shit. <laughs> um... Oh, poor Sway. He's doing his best. God. His parents named him Sway. What do you want from him? A couple of weeks ago, one of my friends invited me to his bachelor party in Vegas. However, about a week before we were supposed to leave, he calls me and says that a couple of guys couldn't make it, so they were going to reschedule it sometime during the summer. On the day we were supposed to go to Vegas, I got a text from him that was meant for his fiance, saying that they had got to their rooms in Vegas, they are heading out to the casinos. <laughs> Should I confront him about this? Do I even go to the wedding after I got royally dicked over? Thanks, brothers. That's from Sulking in San Diego. So they gave this guy the fucking San Diego slip. They uh -huh. gave the San Diego slip, yes. And then he doesn't... He doesn't... What was the guy's follow-up after that? Like, oh, I guess I canceled my bachelor party. We're not having it anymore. Now you don't get to come. Well, what I love is... I love that... I love his optimism that he thinks his friend accidentally sent him that text. 
Or is he maybe like, hey, surprise, we're in our hotel rooms. Hey, can You're you get not. to Vegas? Like, dog, we live in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I absolutely can't get down to Vegas. <laughs> no, we can't do that. Um, What's up with this show being the theme of dick friends? Like, hey, of all the... <laughs> hey, 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 bachelor, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, potential groom... You fuck that text up the worst you could possibly do it. <laughs> We're also having a great time and so glad Bobby's not here. <laughs> hey honey, I'm I'm getting I'm getting my dick wet. <laughs> Oops, Bobby. No. No. Uh you why did I marry a girl named Bobby? <laughs> and have my good good friend named Bobby. So what do you think? That sulk, sulking in San Diego is just sort of the He's like the uncool one in the group, and the group wanted to leave him behind. Or he got a bad rap, and got like a bum rap. You got a bum rap, and I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. He's not. I I do one word rampage. Okay. Oh, sh- I like it. Tell yeah. me more. So, please You're going to Vegas. You're flipping tables. I'm saying roll up to Vegas. Sunglasses on, cigarette lit, gun loaded, chilling with rampage. Chilling with rampage Jackson, the fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Befriend all the pit bosses you can find and, like, say, <gasps> that guy Ocean's over there. Eleven style, like, huge contrast. Try to, Ocean's try Eleven. to steal, steal his wedding. Steal your dignity oh. back. No, steal the wedding. Steal the wedding. Oh, now, look at your those wedding. Fla- are those carnations? Gotta get them, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this, Sulking. You are gonna have to go, A, full Ocean's Eleven, steal the wedding, hijack heist. Loving it. I got or, a tiny Korean man. He jumped through the window of the church and got the whole cake. <laughs> Is that in one jump? Is that a priest? Nope. It's Scott Con. Who's <laughs> <laughs> actually in case the Affleck is there? Casey We're not a hundred percent sure in what capacity. Uh, Scott Con is actually a legal minister, though. He's <laughs> minister in the Presbyterian Church. A lot of people don't know that. You guys want another Yahoo? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Uh, oh God, I should have looked at these ahead of time. Uh, how about this? <laughs> <laughs> so I sent him by Jacob Locker. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Mark. Thank you, Jacob Locker, for giving us this. Uh, Mark asks, Why is this woman farting on my wife at the gym? <laughs> Every time my wife and I go to the gym, a lady, probably in her mid-40s, decides to go near her and fart. The first few times, my wife would give me a funny look, and we would later laugh about it. We'll get back to that. <laughs> but, by the se- but by the seventh or eighth time... My wife has become considerably annoyed. She even said to the woman, excuse you, and the woman completely ignored her, farted again, and walked away. <laughs> Should we complain to the gym's management, or could this lady have a problem? It's strange that only sh- that she only farts on my wife and no one else at the gym. Have you checked around? Did you ask? What is you... It qualifies as a fetish. If after seven to eight times, all you're doing is saying, excuse you, that is not, a, passive aggression <laughs> is maybe the first time it happens or the half, the half time it happens because it's unacceptable any, <laughs> yeah, and then they get punched right in the butt, right? Yeah. Like by seven or, can. by seven or eight, we're at like restraining order and or butt punches. <laughs> yeah. You, by the second time you should ask if you can. Pull down the front of their tank top and puke down it. <laughs> yeah, that's I would like to know. Um, like, can we rewind back to? I would like to know the look that is exchanged. And I think this lady just farted yeah, on me. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That's 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 the sticking point because stinking point. A human ah. a human being just expel <laughs> gas on your wife on your betrothed, <laughs> and what you did. Was she looked at you like, no. Like, okay, hey, did you get th- this? is going to be a fun story later. Like, no, it isn't. You got no. farted on. That's gross and disrespectful. I can't even look at you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you are taking- How am I supposed to make love to you? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I want a divorce. <laughs> I need a divorce. Thank hey, you, smart so- wife. I'm out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Exercise Debbie. You're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this question has, was asked two days ago. Okay. How many more times is, the, is, is this woman con- going to continue to terrorize this yeah. couple? It is I, one woman, right? It's just one. Is it like it a is bunch just of women one or woman. is just one serial dude? Is, she's got a Jack the Ripper. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she's got she's got some sort of crazy obsession, like fucking one hour photo with this wife. <laughs> only instead of like, only instead of like jerking off the pictures of their family's photo. She's farting on only the wife at the gym. Cut it out, everybody. Cut it out. You just ruined the funniest thing. At least fart on everybody. <laughs> yeah. At least go... I would let Robin Williams fart on me all day long. Which is, I, I think, uh, pretty much what he did during License to Wed. <laughs> is, it, is there possible that this middle-aged woman is Robin Williams in a way? <laughs> it's a really good 
good at that. My favorite part of the email is she says, excuse you, and her manager says, please leave. And the woman's response is she farts once more and then, then dips. Excuse me. No, fuck you. <laughs> no, <Nope. Ow. laughs> no, no, no. It's a drive by tooting. That's a doubt fire deep cut. <laughs> Uh, oh, what's everyone's favorite line from what Jesus may come? <laughs> uh, bring them out. Oh fuck. Oh Jesus. Um I uh I like when you can hear Koopa Gooding's junior career to start to like slide right down that hill. <laughs> uh Griffin, let's uh we've been sitting on this couch and it's honestly it's made me a little star the, the crazy. The pasta has actually settled heavy in my gut. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um the, it's made me a little stir crazy and it made me want to take a little journey. With my two brothers. Do you know where? Uh, I don't know where. We've already joined so much today. To the buddy. So, uh, we've, we've got a very happy birthday message to one Sherilyn. This is from her children. Eloise and Jordan. I hope they don't listen. Well, they are four and two, oh, so if they do listen, wow, they either don't understand or they understand so deeply. First of all, these kids have no idea who Robin Williams is. <laughs> we should actually have a, a, a you know how, how deaf people have a, an interpreter there. Mm-hmm. We need something like that for kids. Can we like, get Robin Williams? He's like, he's like, uh, he's like Barney. We can get Robin Williams to interpret for himself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is how I relate to... I'm like, he's the genie in Aladdin. Mm -hmm. Uh Well, there's that, but I mean, even that might... Kids don't even watch Aladdin. You know the man you see on TV sometimes, and he looks like he's on his, like, third or fourth heart, and also his (laughs) hands are carpeted? Just related to uh, Death to Smoochie. Yeah. Okay. Kids love that movie. Uh, So, this is from uh, Sherilyn. Uh, The message is from Jordan Eloise. Um... These kids are super fucking smart. They're they can really, put sentences together they're and emailing. Email. Uh, she uh, is an editor of scientific documents, uh, uh, particularly for French scientists, which means she's uh, probably smarter than the whole couch. Uh, or a secret agent. That sounds like a job that someone comes up with and like, oh, want- she edits yeah. science documents for... Yeah. Doesn't for- it seem like that's every every role that Nicole Kidman has ever played in a movie. <laughs> like, I'm a science editor for French science. I'm not okay <laughs> with you taking French science... And giving it the old American spit shine. Yeah. Like, I would prefer that we keep our science here in our borders safe and sound. Right. We had to develop our science. We, we had to develop it, and you're just giving it away for free for France, or whatever your salary is. What I'm saying is I'll pay your salary. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop doing it. I'll put uh, your kids through college. Uh, so the, the little kids aren't listeners yet. We hope that when they get to be older, um, they will be listeners. And Sherilyn, of course, uh, Sherilyn Woltrop, happy birthday. Uh, to you, we hope you have a well, great one. Shit, because this just changed from a birthday message to a time capsule. Oh yeah, hey kids, hey, kids. I hope you're at least sixteen. Sixteen. So twelve years from a now, good, a good, or, or a mature fourteen. Oh, here comes daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Very discreet. Hold on, um, every smile. It's a every time sm- capsule. It's a time, time capsule for, it's for time your capsule. kids, and we're making a time capsule right now. Oh, but my hair looks terrible. Uh, not oh, a father. Um, uh, so oh. our other. Uh, a- our other journey that we're taking to the Muddy Zone is uh, our buddy James Gowdy, who's who is I don't know if you see him. He's active on the Twitter, active on the Twitter, constantly promoting the show. And, and on he's the a, beat, he's on the beat because he's a police officer for the London Metropolitan Police, the Met Police, and he is going to be in BNBAM's resident policeman. So he's British, right? Yep, he's a Brit. Brit. They don't get guns, right? They have all gun. They are their no. arms are guns. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, they make them surgically replace their arms with gun, and not like the chi- chintzy like. I'm gonna look at the gun, gun. You're show. saying I mean, full like, on like cannon, full like on arm chain cannon. Gun. Right. Um, he fires a pint of Guinness right into someone's face. Yeah, you can find him, Gowdy James, on Twitter if you if you'd like to follow him. Everyone crush him. Just, Just crush, crush him, him with followers. Um, and oh, he says I should throw in my English accent too. So here's what I think it sounds like when a British person. Uh, uh, is a cop? Is a cop. Hold on, wait. Why don't I just play the song, the jingle, and you can sing British cop lyrics over it. You son of a bitch. He's 
Gaudi, but she's not Gaudi. She's a French scientist editor. He's a cop on the beat. She joins him on the street. Unconventional partners work in the beat. It's Gaudi and not Gaudi, Sherilyn. Hey, there's a crime. Can you make it rhyme with tree? Wee! That's the only French word I know. <laughs> Gaudi and not Gaudi, Sherilyn. Cancelled after three episodes. <laughs> Rabid fan base. <laughs> <laughs> Conventions, yeah, they got them. For Gaudi and not Dowdy Sherilyn. Hey, Eloise. Hey, other kid. Sorry I scrolled away from your name. <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy 14th and 16th birthday. <laughs> Asynchronous twins. <laughs> French science. British crime! Governor, <laughs> loving her, I should say so. Gowdy and not Dowdy, Cheryllie. So there we go. That's the money zone. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. I looked away for a second. I was like, "Whoa, is that Liam Gallagher?" Yeah, is it? Is it Liam Gallagher? Is he here? Uh, so that was our our journey in the money zone. They're brothers too. They're brothers too. Did you know that? The Strokes? Uh, if you're interested in uh, joining us for a trip to the Money Zone, you can contact Teresa at MaximumFun.org. That is Teresa with an H. I'm a lesbian and I. Uh, okay. That was British. Okay. Here. I'm a lesbian yeah, and I recently. <laughs> I'm going to do that every time. Okay. I'm a lesbian yeah, I mean... and I recently cut my hair, but now I'm having second thoughts. Before, it was all the way down to my waist, and now it's more a men's style cut. Although still long enough to show my loverly curls. I think it looks cute. It's very low maintenance. And it seems to be net positive with the ladies. But I've noticed that strangers are ruder to me when I, uh, than they were when I looked less dyke. Every so often someone you mistakes say, me. You can't say that word. Di- when I look less dykey. Is that better? You still can't yeah, say no, it. No, that's good. Th- that's her fucking email. Okay. That's what it I, says. I know enough lesbians that I can say dykey. Mm-hmm. Um. If I can say crikey, I don't see what the big difference is. <laughs> but and you can't, every you just so know. often, someone mistakes me for a dude, which makes me embarrassed and uncomfortable. Should I stick it out and get used to being perceived differently by people, or grow my hair long and lovely again, so as to fly under the gaydar and avoid the occasional embarrassing mistake about my gender? Fan from the post-lesbian apocalypse. Is she asking us if she should be proud of her lesbi- lesbianity? Her lesbianics? She, well, she doesn't want, she, she wants to be a lesbian, she doesn't want to be mistaken for a dude. Okay, but I guess that's I guess that's I do have reason. to tell you though, this decision is largely out of your hands for the next month or so. <laughs> so here's my advice: try it for a month and see what you think. If you still don't like it, grow it long. Then here's there are worse things that you can be mistaken for than a dude. Do you know what I'm saying? Liam like Gallagher. Liam Ga- No, fucking Bieber. Bieber. You can look. You can get a Bieber, a sweet Bieber bowl, and then you are in a lot of trouble. Unless yeah. your name is Justin and your last name is Bieber, <laughs> and your middle name is whatever Justin Bieber's name is. Saul. Saul. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Saul Bieber. Justin Schmuel Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> no, we never saw that coming. Um, it, no, you know it. It actually is uh, Justin Osama Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Hussein. <laughs> Bieber. Um, Justin and Hannah Montana. You know what? Bieber. If you <laughs> Justin like and it, Hannah Montana. If you like it, if you like your haircut, it's yours. It's your haircut. Own it. Yeah. Fuck people. Well, if they listen, if they're gonna think you're a dude, they're obviously somebody you don't know very well. Yeah. That's a pretty good litmus test as to whether or not they're a, they're useless. Hey, are you a dude? No. F- like fuck you. Get out of here. I yeah. don't like. I obviously don't want to chill with you. Look at my shapeliness. Look at my shapely curvaceousness. <laughs> Look at this bombastic body. <laughs> Excuse me? Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot and slightly androgynous like me? Is my favorite pussycat doll song. There are so many, though. It's hard yeah, to there choose. are so many. Buttons is good, too. Buttons is good. Hushing up my buttons. I like that. 
Uh, Mr. Boombastic. Mr. Is... Boombastic. <laughs> Mr. Boombastic. Oh, holy night. <laughs> Don't make me sad. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> Duel of the Fates. <laughs> Call me a self spaghetti. I am, I am feeling this pasta vibe. <laughs> yeah, you answer. Yes. Oh Christ. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Declaration of Independence. <laughs> you thought that was a song in the heat of the moment, didn't you? You can admit it. Uh, this one was sent in by John Ramsey. Thank you, John Ramsey. It's by Yahoo Answers user Pretty, who asks: <clears throat> Is marrying a robot? Parentheses with sexual capabilities in parentheses, <laughs> or an animal more socially unacceptable. Oh God! Mm. The robot is designed so that you can quotations screw it. Uh -huh. <laughs> is marrying a robot with sexual capabilities or an animal uh -huh. more socially? We'll say more socially acceptable. Okay, I'm gonna. We're gonna pretend that we don't live in the same universe as Beast Wars because I think that really <laughs> muddies the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think or, in the or epic, Mega Man. In the <laughs> epic court yeah. case, Robo v. Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. Um, marrying a robot with sexual... I think marrying a robot with sex capabilities is more acceptable because I have seen Lars and the Real Girl, but I haven't seen Lars and the Real Alligator. <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem is, is that every time you introduce someone to your wife, you have to say, this is my wife, a robot with sexual capabilities. <laughs> yeah, check, check it. She's got holes in everything. She is ready to party. Is that better than, like, this is my wife, Tracy, she's not a real llama? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up with that art, Mark? Don't you talk about my wife like that? We fuck all the time. <laughs> Wait, so we're assuming the animal has sexual capabilities, right? It doesn't specify the question. I think all, pretty much all animals, although it depends on the size, because... If we if we are talking about like a like a porcupine or well that's a bad example but like a I don't know a hamster that well still fuck there's a lot uh, of sexy animals out there you guys it is a minefield uh, the, the the worry of course with a fake girl is that y you'll create an uncanny valley yeah and that is the tightest leg <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man um, this was just a little less canny also uh, you gotta worry about Self, self, actualization. What's it called? When oh, they come, when they like realize, sentient. When they, well, I mean, if it's a fuck robot, I would hope that it's sentient, or else I'd feel like I'm with a vegetable. Yeah, uh -huh. I want, I want somebody who, like, after a while, figures out right this this system that I've set. Up. You don't have to worry about that. Third law of robotics is don't harm a human. Fourth law of robotics: swallow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is true. We are in our daddy's. I'm house. not making this up. We are in our daddy's house. I know. Let's Fifth law: anniversary, anything goes. Yeah, I want to marry a sex robot that whisper, has standards. Whisper the rest of this. Has, we gotta whisper the rest of this question. I want her. <laughs> nope, I can't no, do you it. Got it. You got it. No, I'm not. Lena, we're in our daddy's house. We're in daddy's house. I, I can't go on with this. It yeah. whispers. Yeah, we get. We got just this question. Just this question. I want to marry a sex robot um, with standards, like rules, or like no, I don't do the butt. Like, that's what I want. They, like, they have that program that you think that that would prevent them from going into a killing frenzy? If well, like, I mean, they have certain restrictions. Like, 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 Roger, like, Fs me all the time, but at least he, he like, gave me boundaries. He programmed yeah. those boundaries in. Right. I take that, but I want to go wild on that. What yeah. about, ooh, a robot it. animal? Do we already cover this? Can we not do that? Yeah, we, we did, did a the, robot we, robot? With the Beast Wars contingent, oh. I established that that can't be. But now Travis, is, Travis really wants to explore that space. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, a, a dog is man's best friend. A robot dog is man's like brother, and a robot dog with fuck capabilities. Hey, are there any answers? Did anybody dip in to give it a shot? Uh, 
It's Romans one twenty four through twenty seven. <laughs> you fucker! You're gonna try to drop the Bible on this person like they never left left traditional morality behind a few puppies ago. Robots one. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, turn your Bibles to the Book of Robots. It's one chapter, one verse. It's Robots one one. Don't fuck robots, you weirdo. <laughs> I'm sure there's stuff in the rest of the Bible about fucking animals. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta be. Um, but but it's gotta be. Uh, you'll find the Book of Robots. That's that was in the Dead Sea Scrolls, I believe. Mm -hmm. If memory serves. If you marry an animal, you're a freak. Into bestiality, e.g., a perv, uh -huh. and you're harming a living creature. So it's a double dose of perversion. Are we like? All right, first of all, stop. <laughs> Anyway, I, just my thigh out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you are assuming that what I do to my pet llama is <laughs> harmful and that's like beautiful and natural. Like, you know what? Think of it this way. Did you guys hear about that law? Somebody just passed a law. I can't remember which state. Probably one of the more fucked up ones that says you can't have sex with an animal. Mm -hmm. But they worded it in a way that doesn't exclude human beings because we're animals. So they basically made it, I think it was in Florida, you can't fuck in Florida anymore, like that's the law, is that you can't fuck in Florida. But that law brings up a good point, because we're animals too. Mm. Uh -huh. I should be able to fuck whatever I want. Robots, not animals, not humanoid. Mm. They can be humanoid shaped, but they can't feel like their walls, like the walls of their vagina inside right, of right. it. Like it doesn't... I see. It's, right. it's not, it's not, it's not moist, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, you know, usually these things end with big laughs and we move on. So, Griffin, you've made it. Just drop some science on everybody. Case. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sold. Animals. I'm, animals. I think, animals. I think, animals. I case closed. It. Case closed. I'm interested in dating my brother's girlfriend's sister. <clears throat> is it a? Per it is acceptable for brothers to date sisters? If one pair get married, do the other pair have to immediately break up? Tag team in Texas. I feel like this is one of those multi-layered questions where someone's trying to trick us into saying it's okay to have sex with their sister. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't, like... Incept it. Enough. Hey, hold on, wait. Is your sister an animal? I think she is. Yeah. She's a, an animal called a human called Homo erectus. <laughs> get, get it. Yeah. Um, Actually, she's not human. She's dancer, it says here. So. <laughs> um, that, okay, so my brother's girlfriend's, girlfriend's sister. sister. I think it's okay. Like, isn't that the plot of one of the Brady Bunch movies? Did all of them hook up? With Guys, we didn't couples? think about something. Tell me. Tell me. Bicentennial Man. <laughs> what you get. You start out with Robin Williams, pure, whole robot. By the end, he's a human being. He's had all of his robot parts replaced with human being parts, and he can feel and die and maybe go to heaven. <laughs> like, real people heaven. Like, straight up, real people heaven. And not, well, robots don't get anything. But what do you think about that? Oh, now we're back to moral ambiguity. Uh, yeah. Damn it! Sorry, I, did, I didn't mean to interrupt the flow. I would, I, I would argue that if, if we eventually made him into Robin Williams, he's not a person. <laughs> <laughs> I think our bigger concern is once you open the floodgate on one of them, you're going to end up with robots marrying animals. Like, yeah. If you open oh, Robin Williams' floodgate, you can just get out the way. <laughs> he really isn't a person anymore. Is <laughs> he's yeah. a typhoon he no is chuckle. A, he is a comedy he's shadow. He's a walking awkward. He is. <laughs> unpleasant with him right he's now. He's negative laughter. I'm unpleasant <laughs> on the, sh the, the pall he has cast over this show. Nanu, nano. <laughs> nano, no thanks. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Don't date your sister, you don't weird. Don't date. No, it's, she's saying... Your sister-in-law? <sighs> no, don't do it because if one of you... Uh, I don't care about one of you getting married. I care about one of you breaking up. Because yeah. that will take you to the awkward village. How was your how was your how was your Christmas? It was great. There were sword fights because one of us dated and the other ones broke up. Um, just don't do it. Just don't do it. That was easy. That was easy. Romans one fifteen through sixteen says, "Don't don't fuck your sister's sisters, sister. sisters brothers. Don't fuck anyone who was ever on the TV show Sister Sister. That includes Taj Mowry. Um, Irv. I uh, I recently started to text and talk with an old college friend." It's been five years, and we live a few states apart, but things seem to be progressing towards the romantic. My problem is I've gained a significant amount of weight since college, like a hundo, <laughs> putting me at 6'2", 300 LBs. 6'2", 300 LBs? <laughs> no. <laughs> I weigh between 6 and 300, no, 6'2", 300 LBs. Do I mention this to her or just show up with some extra for her to love? 
Rotund Romancer. Okay, you got to drop that nomenclature. <laughs> hey, I've got some branding to go to go along with hey, this. Hey, Debbie, good news, I got branding. <laughs> Check out my lycra jacket. I, they're stitched on the back. Um, I say you need to update your Facebook with a current picture and just let the with chips the, with fall the, with, the, with the caption, surprise! Surprise! <laughs> this is it. No, oh. I mean, if it's what does she love? Does she love your heart? She love that heart of yours? It happens, guys. I, <laughs> it happens from time to time that a person doesn't love this fame filled frame. They love that heart. <laughs> they love that sweet heart of mine. Um, Is that the case that you're going with? Did your heart get fatter? Because if that's the case, it just means you have more love to give her. Uh, it, here's what you should not do. Absolutely, you cannot mention it. No. Like, you can't say, hey, listen, just big news. Just heads up. I've really bulked up. <laughs> You can't say that. Like, don't say that. But, you know, put some current pictures up there. I got another option for you. Just get get right. Hey, why don't you get your your frame right? And, you know, there's also a good chance <laughs> How she's shame let herself go a little handle? bit. <laughs> How much shame is in your frame? Get the shame out your frame and get your frame some fame. Made, I want to be about 100 pounds less. <laughs> Made, get down that episode. Um, you can, I mean, you cannot do anything, but there... There may be a look on her face that you aren't going to be able to but, shake. Oh, for a but imagine this yeah. beautiful moment. There's a look on her much fatter face. Oh, shit! Oh, no, Shrek! It's a Shrek ending! <laughs> <It's got> a- <laughs> We're accidentally in love! Oh. A- I wanted to be a princess. You are a princess. Get over here. I have chicken! <laughs> listeners, sorry about us. Hey, sorry about us this I whole need, thing. I'm just. Ju- I. I I think that you should just go for it. And if she turns you down, then she doesn't deserve you. She's a, yeah. she's Put a current picture up. If she says, is that current? Say, no, I'm chunking <laughs> up. And then stop eating. <laughs> you gotta get slimmer. Say, I'm going, I'm on all my way down. I promise. Please don't leave me. <laughs> Please, I need you so bad, Debbie. And if not, maybe like you guys will be friends or something. <laughs> <laughs> the worst five minutes of advice anyone's yeah. ever given anyone. Somebody, somebody go to CJ Maggie's with. Um... <laughs> How about it? How about one final yacht? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, this one was sent in by Gali Ayali. Thank you, Gali Ayali. It's by Yali Lancer's user. Oh no, the picture itself is pretty wonderful. The real Marty Janetti. <laughs> uh, Except no subs. You guys, are you guys soaking in that image? <laughs> oh man, that tiny thumbnail. Uh, it's a wrestler. And he's holding a belt. Uh, Usually if I don't know a celebrity, they're a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the real something something asks. How can I convince my girlfriend to dress up like Violet Beauregard from Willy Wonka? <laughs> I am in love with two ladies. Okay. <laughs> my sweet little blueberry, aka my G friend, and Violet Beauregard from Willy Wonka. Uh-huh. I think it's so sexy the when Violet <laughs> inflates into a sphere and would love to see my lady do the same. How can I convince her that this would be both fun and sexy? Lol. She doesn't realize it yet, but her nickname comes from my number one screen crush. Oh, uh, I bought the costume last week, and I'm fighting up the courage to ask her. Please, any <laughs> suggestions? P.S. Not like in the new crappy Johnny Depp Charlie and the Chocolate <laughs> That CGI looked horrible. Only Mel Stewart's version. I can't. Oh God. I can't finish unless it's the Mel Stewart's version. <laughs> You look, right now, Rashonda, you look beautiful, but you look like that shitty, <laughs> that shitty uh, Johnny Depp version of Charlie and Chuck Franklin. Honey, I got you this outfit and this bicycle pump. Let's go to town. Yeah, we are going to give you some artificial juice-filled dumps. You ever, <laughs> you ever hear that thing where it's like, if you press this button, you'll get a million dollars, but someone in the world will die. Yeah. Do you press the button? If I can guarantee it's this guy, I'm just going to start hammering on it. <laughs> Oh man, how stealth do you have to be about your your number one screen crush that you have given this girl a nickname, which is my little blueberry, and she doesn't know what it's referring to. You have to watch this movie like on the reg, right? Like, and you can tell he's got like a half boner, like when yeah. she walks in the room. She swells, he swells, baby. Uh, That's how he do. <laughs> That's uh, gross. That is so unpleasant that you would like that so much. If you're gonna get, if you're gonna. To anything in that movie, why not a goose is gloop getting sucked up in that chocolate pond, that chocolate tube? Oh. I feel like 
I feel like we've just found a really great psychological test. It's like, if you had to jerk it to one scene in Willy Wonka, and your answer means something. How about if you jerk it to any second about that movie, which is primarily about, <laughs> primarily about murdering kids? <laughs> Boy, there is a, you know what, as angry as I was about this guy, there is a much more unpleasant gentleman whose fetish is a little boy stuck in a chocolate tube. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, like, there's that... Fear, you don't have to lay it. The I mean, parts of your brain, a fear and arousal, are right next to each other. Is anything scarier than that? The look on that fucking kid's face when he's surrounded by plastic and tiny orange men and sweet chocolate. It's like, a, it's heaven and hell, baby. <laughs> he, knows, he knows death is around the corner. What about the girl that gets thrown in the incinerator? Yeah. That movie is terrifying. Why Why am I so erect then? Why am I, to me. Why, oh, that was a bad... There's no earthly way of knowing why I have this huge boner. That was a bad... Oh, well, no, no, no. There is no earthly way of knowing why my boner is still growing. <laughs> Is it, surely showing. <laughs> is it shrinking? Is it blowing? <laughs> and the semen now is flowing. <laughs> oh, oh, so I want to hear Griffin's <laughs> very last question. But first, um, I wanted to. See Say well, we we have a live show. It's going to be June twelfth. We have a handful of tickets left, and I'm not saying that like they say it to try to encourage people to buy. We literally have like ten seats left. We we have those on Sunday night, and this show's going up on Monday morning. So like, no guarantees, and hopefully, like we've talked about it on Twitter and our Facebook as much as we can, and on our website, and our right website, yeah, it's yeah. all on maximumfun.org. Uh, so like, if you if you don't get tickets, like we're sorry, we're going to keep doing these live shows. So. This isn't like the last chance. And this one's thing. Th hopefully we'll be able to, to. We're all you know close enough to Cincinnati. Maybe we can do this again at some point if you miss out on on the show because the response has been so awesome for you, for yeah, you guys. Thank we you really so much, appreciate guys. it. Oh, Christ. <laughs> and, and we're still shopping for opening acts. We've got a few really good leads, but if you live in Cincinnati or know like a really great comic or band or anything like that in Cincinnati, at this point I'm really excited about Magician. Um, it's something I'm leaning towards. I'm getting some some fight from the brothers. Um, I would take a magician at this point. Can we get a ball pit? <laughs> you mean just like a half hour ball pit? Like I don't like yeah. Like we just put the ball pit up there and just like go nuts. We originally said that we could have another podcast open for us, and, and we did have a couple of um, suggestions, but we were worried that they could be better than ours, and we can't have that. So we gotta so, have somebody yeah. who's not a podcast now. We've decided, because we're that's the kind of insecurity we're talking and about And if here. you're already going to be in town, uh, if you're coming in town, Cincinnati, uh, might I suggest checking out Complete Works of William Shakespeare Bridge to the Cincinnati Shakespeare Company, <laughs> who <laughs> <laughs> they are uh, wonderfully hosting our show. So if you want to check that out in the afternoon and then come see our show at night, I highly recommend it. They act really fucking good. They, they act, act so good. They act really good. Uh, so uh, thank you guys. If, we love it when people uh, tweet on Twitter about our show and use the MBMBAM hashtag so we make sure to uh, to, to see it. Uh, right Rickman is an, is a relatively new convert, I think. Uh, he was tweeting tweeting up a storm. Um, uh, let's see, our buddy Rhyme Swag, he's he's a, a relatively new tweeter. I haven't seen him popping up too much. Uh, I do like IP and butts, which is a good... <laughs> a pretty good oh, wait, wait, I love this. Go back down. This guy's my favorite. Onk Monk says, at MBMBAM. Fuck you! <laughs> Got us. Got us. Nailed us again. Um, I want to hand out a uh, special congratulations to my friend uh, Sabrina and Chris. Uh, they just had a baby. And I'm going to go ahead and name it Travis McElroy's pick for my brother, my brother, and me baby of the year. The most pinchable baby of 2000 and heaven. So let's give that up to Benjamin <clears throat> Prometheus Stoker. Real name. The um, sweetest baby. What a great baby. Um, and uh, thanks to our buddy uh, Cole Ross. That's Cole with a K. He hosts uh, uh, and produces uh, Stand Under the Don't Tree and Riddle Me This. And is also co-host of Those Damn Ross Kids. And he uh, he is in Cincinnati. So we'll be able to feel his vibes emanating through the air. Oh, I feel him here. Do I you feel him in Ironton. Uh, so hi to everybody. Ducklips513. Everybody tweeting about the show. We really appreciate it. Um, Thanks to our daddy and to Carol for just just, just ram jamming, daddy, Carol. ram jamming us with pasta. So much pasta. Gonna go eat some strawberry pie too. Oh yeah, don't mind if I do. Um, so this has been Pasta Fest. Thank you for being a part of it. 
Uh, Thank you for for tuning in next week for Rasta Fest. <laughs> Every year we're going to do Pasta Fest in May, Rasta Fest in late May, early June. <laughs> um, and Griffin right now is going to hit you, the listening audience, with our very last question of the week. Um, oh, one more thing: if you're uh, if you'd like to introduce the show to somebody, um, we've got a brand new way of doing it. It's the MBMBAM sampler uh, that is located at bit dot ly forward slash it's mbmbam so bitly forward slash it's my bim bam uh so may if you're gonna send you know if you want to tweet about the show to be listen to it please use that link um and just say like hey i think you'd like this jerk it's about 12 minutes some of our um classic bits classic. If, oh, if this is your first time listening if you're one of the people introduced to that make sure to check out our website www.mbmbam.com let's bury this bitch uh, Thank it. Final question was sent in by Asumain Mariko. Thank you, Asumain Mariko. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user PumperTech, who asks, <laughs> I'm bored. What do you do for fun? It is raining out also, and I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your daddy. Square on the lips. Hi, daddy. <laughs> Keep your heart three stacks. Keep your heart, hey. Keep your heart three stacks. Keep your heart, man. These girls are smart. Three stacks. These girls are smart. Play your part. <laughs> <laughs>